and welcome fellow bookworms and film fans. Welcome to this week's episode of The Contented Narrative. We are looking at Honeycomb by Joanne M. Harris. Now, I asked for this for Christmas and Daisy kindly bought it for me. Um, and, you know, I specifically normally ask for my books in, in paperback. But I'd forgotten that I asked Daisy to get it for me and I was genuinely, when I, I was when I found out that I'd asked her, I was gutted because I really wanted that one in hardback. Um, and somehow she was on the same wavelength as me and bought it in hardback and it is just, honestly, it's just absolutely gorgeous. It's got like perfect little illustrations in it, like book one long ago. Um, just just the whole, the whole thing is just a delight. Now it wasn't, so like you see there, just absolutely, just lovely. Now, this book, I don't like, I was literally, I was drawn in. They always say don't judge a book by its cover. I saw this in Waterstones. I saw there was a story the bees used to tell. Um, and I could see that, you know, about the worlds of honeycomb and everything like that. And I genuinely was like, oh, I'll read that. I'm excited. So as I said, I put it on my Christmas list. And Daisy, thank you so much. Got me such a perfect edition there. So I, uh, <laughs> so I got it. And I started reading it and it wasn't what I expected. So I expected it to be sort of like one continuous story and it's not. And that doesn't mean that it's not a good book because it has like little stories in it, but it it basically follows the Lacewing King from when he was born up until right at the end. Um, but there's like, so for example, there's little stories like the cat who was king, the bull and the snail, you know, um, the silent songbird, but it's, so it's just little stories that are interlaced with the bigger story. And sometimes you, these little stories somehow end up interweaven with the bigger story as well with the lace wing king. Uh, and sometimes they have literally nothing to do with, uh, with the main story at all. And I enjoyed it. I thought it was just, it was whimsical. It was just, enjoyable it was i mean some stories were like a page long you literally read it and it was like oh okay but it was just it was enough and it was just it was so well fabricated and interwoven and you know it's just the 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 way that it was written is perfect for children perfect for young adults perfect for adults it's basically like a fairy tale collection but it has it's like the Wishing Chair Collection, which I absolutely love by Ina Blyton. It's basically, and, and like Narnia as well, you've got your main story, your main characters, you've got that running all the way through, but then you've got your little stories that go, right, this is what's happened at this point, this is what's happened. Do you know what I mean? And it was just so lovely. And it was just, because as you're aware, I tend to read murder mysteries, whodunits, serial killers, all of that. I try to, to look at different books for this channel so that, you know, it's not just me constantly being like, I guess I got murdered this week, guys. But it is a case of like when I'm, when I was reading it, it was just nice to not be reading about someone that's going to be murdered or trying to figure out who did it. It was just nice to read just a collection of fairy tales. And I honestly wasn't expecting what I got. And it was, and that just made it so much better because when you read the blurb, it sounds like it's one continuous story and you're like, great, perfect. But then when you get it, it's just so much more. The illustrations in it are absolutely beautiful. Now, normally, obviously, I do recommend to people if you want to, if you want to buy a book or get a book, get it in like paperback um, or, you know, Kindle as well. Kindle's pretty good. But if you can get this one in hardback because it's just so stunning honestly and i i mean it goes on my special hardback shelf because i just i love it it just looks it looks inviting and it is it's fantastic so i i give it a four out of five um and again the four out of five isn't it is as i said magical book love the stories it's because some of them like I think one of them was about um, uh, a piglet that was literally just like wouldn't shut up or something, and I was just like, some of them I felt like they didn't need to be in there. Um, so sometimes I was like, oh, okay, right, yep, yeah, perfect. But it was still, it was still lovely, and it's it's not like a, a in your face kind of moralized story, you know, like when you read like the Lorax, um, which I did uh, the the other year actually, when it's all about must look after the planet, blah blah blah. It's more, you know, learn, like, you, you can be one person, but you can change. And the character arc of the Lacewing King is just, it's just beautiful because it's not one certain thing. It's just little things that kind of change his character as he goes through. And 
it was just it was honestly i know i keep saying it but it was a delight to read so if you can get this um borrow it from the library you know buy it but i would definitely say give this one a go because it's one that you can dip in and out of um and it's one that you don't necessarily have to read as one but it is one that i would say i mean even if you've got small children it's a perfect little thing to read to them um but yeah, so that's that's my opinion there, guys. Um, as always, if you agree or disagree with anything that I say, please leave it below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and your continued support. Uh, you can find me, obviously, um, on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, you can leave me messages through YouTube there. But remember, guys, to always keep it contento.